everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then hello, my name is Shauna and today we are going to be talking about all things first trimester. Those that have watched my videos before, you'll be happy to know that I have found my mic, so hopefully the audio quality is a lot better than it has been and thank you for persevering through all of the videos because there's been many where I haven't been able to find my mic and I've even bought mics in the process which was the wrong ones but it was meant to be because I found my old one which means that I saved some money okay so if you're just clicking onto this video now and you've never been on my channel you don't know who I am I am Shauna and I am pregnant with my first baby I'm 29 years old and yeah I am 17 weeks today may i add ah it's going fast but i also know that there's still a long way to go so i'm feeling quite calm and you know taking it in my stride now i've got my energy back so speaking of energy back <laughs> let's get into my first trimester video so i found out about four to five weeks when i was pregnant it was from a missed period and four positive pregnancy tests i go into a bit more of the detail about that in one of my videos where i announce that i'm pregnant so i will link that down below just so that i'm not wasting any time for anybody that has heard because i'm aware that this video may be it may be long and it is definitely going to be very chatty so let me pause there get yourself a drink whether it's water definitely stay hydrated or a coffee or anything that you like really get some snacks as well I'll try and be rapid but I also want you to be able to understand where I'm at at each point of each week of my first trimester first ever trimester I also apologize about the backlit I have put this here on this side I'm just going to try and stay sat in the middle I thought I'd switch it up and go in my car but I don't know whether that was the best idea really just gives me a bit of privacy because yes I've not yet moved out and got my own privacy where it's just me my fiance and baby and Kobe. Um, Kobe is my dog. Anyway, I'm rambling. So four to five weeks, I've also written everything down because pregnancy brain. But who am I kidding, actually? I just wouldn't remember everything. I didn't want to miss any details out. So four to five weeks, yes, I found out. Took four positive pregnancy tests. Looking back, my hair because people say what was your signs to take a pregnancy test i've already told you in the video below so go and have a look down there however i don't even know whether i mentioned this in that video because on reflection i noticed that my hair was getting a lot more greasier a lot quicker i used to be able to wash my hair once a week and you know no one will bat an eyelid whereas i felt like if i wanted to have nice hair and it not look too greasy it would have to be washed twice a week which is still good but I definitely noticed that my hair was a lot more greasy and I do feel like that was a sign that I was maybe ignoring but it was a sign that you know your hormones are changing oh there's a baby in there kind of thing let's move on to six weeks so six weeks I felt more tired my hips ached whether that was in my mind or not I don't know but my hips definitely ached boobs felt tender and then eating wise, I was mainly reaching for chicken and mushroom pot noodles, which I hadn't had in ages, but I wouldn't say it was a craving. I would say that I've not really had many cravings, but I reached for them. Grapes, strawberries, Lucasade berry, just to get the energy and bread. I didn't care how much bread I was eating. I didn't care about the puffiness that I felt eating it because I couldn't really necessarily eat much stuff, but it's not because I was going to be sick or was being sick because I wasn't I was really lucky I went off of coffee everything just felt heightened but my normal that's what I've written so when I say everything just felt heightened but my normal it it means like oh, I, did, I I wasn't but I wasn't sick and I wasn't necessarily nauseous but you know when I'm hungry on a normal day a normal life where I'm not pregnant I yeah would feel tired and less energy but it just hit me a lot harder a lot quicker into being hungry if that makes sense and then I've also put that I kept going hot and cold 
Now, I naturally am like this anyway. If my feet are out of the bed for too long with no socks on, I get cold anyway. But that was heightened because I, it, my feet would be freezing and it would take hours for them to get warm, even with socks on, even with thermal socks on and under the duvet. And same with hot. Like, when I eat, I get hot naturally anyway. But it just was to a new level during my first trimester, during my six weeks anyway, where, yeah, I'd just go extremely hot. I'd have to lay down because I'd be like, whew like real hot flushes so it was one extreme to the other zero to 100 i told my close circle when i was six weeks it still didn't feel real felt like i had no appetite felt sick shakes when hungry but couldn't eat a lot in one go which again i'm normally like that anyway i'm very little and often however this time it was very much like i couldn't finish meals i ne didn't necessarily finish two slices of toast all of the time just because i got full quick like extremely quick. I felt down and like I was wasting days. This is because I'm a very, very, very ongoing, can't rest person, if that makes sense. So I love a day in the house, but a day in the house, I will still be replying to emails, doing programs for fitness clients, maybe writing up sessions for my dance movement psychotherapy clients you know, to even just tidy in the room, like doing a deep clean, I couldn't do any of that, I literally just laid in bed, and, you know, I even struggled to take Kobe for a walk sometimes, whereas luckily I had my granddad and his partner to be able to, so yeah, I just think it did get me down, not doing things that was productive in my eyes, whereas in reflection, I was being productive by resting, because, you know, something massive had changed in my body, even though physically I didn't look any different on my app that I have, you know, the baby was the size of a pea or even less. So it's easy to think like nothing's really changed. I'm only like a few weeks pregnant, whereas actually internally a lot is going on. So I was actually productive by doing nothing, but I didn't feel like that at the time so into my seventh week i felt more exhausted and nauseous but never sick so i've never touched wood to this day being sick but i have felt nauseous quite a lot like i would usually get up to make food and whilst i'm up making food because i'm so tired weak and i guess nauseous as well that's when I started to feel really sick. Like there was a few occasions, not at this point, I don't think, but there was a few occasions where I was like, oh, this time I'm actually going to be sick. I never was. I managed to do a dance show. So I was really proud of myself. I managed to do a Tina Turner dance show. I think I did actually do a video that night because I was home alone and I did a YouTube video I won't link it because it's not really related, but I did do a YouTube video where it was like, get on ready with me at like 0.30 a.m. sort of thing. I'm just gonna have some water because I'm, I'm sensing that I have a croaky throat. I was very proud of myself. I felt quite connected to the baby because although I had danced and done gymnastics gigs whilst being pregnant, but I didn't know I was pregnant, because I was more aware that I was pregnant, I was more aware of my body and my limits, and I could still push myself quite a lot. It was more off stage where I was like, oh, I'm so tired, or driving home or driving there, or the beforehand when I had to get ready, where I was very like, oh, I'm so tired, like, I don't know if I could do this. And I always managed to put, pull it out of the bag. And I don't always advise this because listen to your body, listen to your mind but adrenaline really does carry you through a lot of the time, especially if you love what you're doing. But yes, I did a Tina Turner dance show. I felt more bloated. Boobs felt a little more swollen. I fancied watermelon more and buttery toast. I was eating fruit, sugary foods, salt and vinegar crisps, Lucasade Sport berry flavor, of course, and orange juice. I liked coffee again. And then I've put hot and cold, but not as bad. But feet always had two thermal socks on and hands sometimes cold. So again, even if my feet was under the bed sheets and I've come in from the dance show, for example, I would then have two thermal socks, which is what I wore in Lapland the year before. That's all I wore 
two thermal socks and some really good boots of course so the fact that i was wearing that in bed in england and it was the summer our summer of course that just is baffling to me because it's obvious how extremely cold my feet was and how long it took my feet to get warm again which was not my normal but i do normally get cold feet so that's why i'm explaining that it was heightened in a few weeks back i just really want to make sense and i feel like i'm not already <laughs> so ordered some nausea bands from amazon i didn't actually end up using them i've still got them i didn't actually use them i, I get a little bit funny with like wrists and because they are wristbands and it's something to do with your pressure point i know nothing really happens as such but i just thought okay i'll use these worst case scenario and it never really got that bad so i never used them uh, but i did buy them and i wanted to mention that just in case you know somebody maybe needs a recommendation or anything and maybe i'll do a video i don't know let me know down below energy and nausea came in waves mint helped with the nausea so like mint tweets like sucking sweets or chewing sweets like mentos chewing gum all of that kind of stuff really helped with if i was feeling nauseous and i was driving to work for example i'd have that and i would start to feel my stomach almost settle whether it was a mind thing i don't know but it worked for me i loved i've put this in capital letters loved cold water and that was the only thing that was really helping me drink water and you know because i was very mindful like i felt quite dehydrated and i was very mindful that you know i need to be drinking even more water now i used to be quite good at drinking water and then all of a sudden because i was just sleeping a lot in my breaks and whenever i was home i wasn't really drinking enough water <laughs> i've put here already wanting more micro needling and this is because i had to of course switch products and i stopped taking my collagen powder and stopped using my retinol and you know i just felt uh i felt meh i felt like my skin had aged overnight and looked dull i've had micro needling before for scarring and i was like oh, i'd just love to go and get some micro needling done and then i was like mental note 30th birthday is not long before baby's due maybe i should ask for some micro needling and then i was like i've got a long way off yeah how am i gonna cope but i'm getting a bit better now so maybe that was like a a slight insecurity of like body changing skin changing a lot of change with products as well and you know no energy to moisturize most days so i struggled with this because of course i was thinking wow like i already naturally moisturize my whole body anyway especially in colder months or especially if i know that i'm going on holiday soon which isn't the case at the minute but yeah, so I was a bit like, oh, if I've got no energy to moisturise, how am I going to go back to my dance movement psychotherapy work? Because this was in the summer currently, and because I work in schools, I wasn't doing as much work. I was just mainly performing, and, you know, that wasn't as consistent as the DMP work. So, yeah, I was very nervous about that and a little bit concerned about how September might look if I can't find the energy to moisturize my body when it takes like five minutes if that feeling more breathless when walking again i don't know whether this was in my head but i did feel more breathless and i guess that just came down to because nothing changed in size but i guess it came down to you just having no energy and being tired and yeah i feel like that's where that came from i don't really think i'm as breathless now if i'm talking a lot and i'm walking then yes i am breathless but i feel like i was like that before anyway it's hitting me that me and tom don't live together and this makes me hide away when less positive or feeling unwell so if you don't know tom's my fiance baby daddy and we don't live together we plan on moving out very soon fingers crossed any advice on that please let me know i guess like there's, there was times where i was meant to be stopping at his like i'd say okay i'm gonna drive to you i'm gonna come to yours and he would like maybe do dinner or something i don't know like try and make it nice and i'd be like oh, i just want to stay in bed and then he'd offer to come to me and i'd be like no i just want to go sleep and he felt like i was pushing him away when i wasn't i just was a little bit like why would you come to my house when 
I'm just going to be sleeping and you're just going to be bored and I would then feel bad or I'd feel the pressure to try not to sleep and whatnot which was probably fine for him but I was just concerned about him as well and I guess as well there was a part where you know I wasn't showing the less positive sides and so I guess I wasn't sharing that part of the pregnancy with him and sometimes he might have been a bit like I want to be there to help well all of the time of course when for me I was just a little bit like I just want to deal with this myself whereas if we lived together you know I can take myself up to the room or down to the settee but he can also do his own thing he can help where need be but also if I need the space I can ask for it and he's still in the comfort of his own home and he can still keep checking on me so everyone's sort of needs are met whereas both of our needs technically wasn't met at times because I wanted to be at my house and I wanted him to be at his house or I was planning on going to his house and I didn't go to his house I hope that makes sense because yeah I only really hear from soon to be new parents that already live together in mine and Tom's circumstance is a little bit different and I wouldn't change it for the world however I am very 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 fingers crossed everything crossed that we do move out before baby comes because we just need our own space and that does get to me sometimes quite a bit if you ask Tom what you know I mainly stress about maybe it would be labour if I you know was in my own space and had less stressful things to stress about like I'll let the midwives and everything stress about that or I'll stress about it last minute of course but yeah it's the house it's moving out having my nesting phase in our own house getting Kobe settled in the house was all settled in the house really moved in as movable and as livable as possible so yeah Okay, week eight. So I was less nauseous, super tired, cried because I feel like I let Tom down when I say I'll stop at his, but then feel too tired to drive to his. I feel less myself, never rested this much, feel lazy, feel dramatic. I was very aware that, you know, I haven't had the worst pregnancy. A lot of people are sick. A lot of people physically can't get out of bed. Whereas like I could get out of bed, it just took a lot. If I, especially if I knew, you know, I'm working later, I'm working tomorrow. Whereas normally I wouldn't be like that if I wasn't pregnant. I'd still be like making the most of the day, seizing the day. And yeah, so I felt like if I was saying no to doing something with someone or even like a phone call, a phone call with Tom sometimes or anyone that would phone me, whether they knew about it or not, I'd feel dramatic if I was just like, oh, I'm just going to have to go to sleep him. Yeah, I, I don't feel great. And it's like, but there's pregnant people in the first trimester feeling worse, you know? So I think that's where I felt dramatic, felt lazy. I felt like, am I making excuses? But I wasn't. I was listening to my body and I'm not really that used to doing that. So I've also put, I had the driest lips, feel dehydrated, struggling to sleep, no motivation for anything, more spotty. Brought loads of new clothes to cheer myself up, but then stressed because I need to move house and buy lots of baby stuff and prepare for maternity leave. So, yes, very aware of all of that. And I guess that might have been like my most stressful week. Week nine, a bit more energy and productive. First appointment. Yes, yeah, so my first appointment, actually. I already said in the last video that I did I talk about this? Hopefully I didn't, so it's not repeating. But just in case anyway. Um, yeah, so my, the first appointment I'm referring to is actually my first midwife appointment. However, I did have a first appointment like a few days after I found out I was pregnant. I assumed that was going to be the midwife appointment because I told the receptionist I'm pregnant. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what steps I have to take. Like, who do I have to tell? And, you know, I wanted a professional to confirm that I am actually pregnant, even though I had four positive tests. So she booked me an appointment. She never said anything about, you know, oh, we don't have a midwife here anymore or something. So I just saw a regular doctor, which was fine. It was still reassuring. She told me to take folic acid, which I hadn't been taking. So it was still productive and progressive in that way. 
But other than that, she didn't really do anything. She was just like, yeah, you need to book an appointment with your midwife. And I was like, I thought that's what this was. Uh, so, yeah, I felt a little bit silly. Like, you don't really know what to do when you find out you're pregnant. Whereas I hope this video helps you kind of know, okay, you need to specifically say, okay, I need to make a midwife appointment. I think I'm this amount of weeks. But yes, week nine, I had my midwife appointment and Tom came with me. So we had to go to a doctor's literally just around the corner from my other doctors because I think they're short staffed on midwives or something. And yeah, there isn't a midwife at my current doctors. So I yeah went to the one around the corner. Now that's where I go for my midwife appointments. So I went in with Tom. It was mainly about our family history. Uh, separately and you know our our health now so like questions like do you smoke do you drink a lot etc like we both had those questions and about like family history like I say I had to have my blood pressure done which was fine my urine sample done which was fine um what else did I have to have done blood test which I was very nervous about but that was fine we both had to do the carbon is it dioxide test where we both blow into this applicator this object we blew into an object and it tells you what your carbon dioxide levels are our midwife was lovely and you know she was also pregnant herself so that was the first and last time that i'll ever see that midwife basically and it, I was gutted because I felt like I could really relate to her. Um, but yes, she told me about the new midwife that I'm going to meet next week, actually. Um, so my 18th week. And her name is April. And baby is due in April. So it's meant to be. And I'm sure she'll be lovely. So I meet her next week anyway. But one thing I will say about this midwife appointment, I went to the midwife appointment being like, yes, like a professional is going to confirm there's a baby in there. That didn't happen either. So, you know, there was nothing. I knew that I wouldn't have a scan, but I thought like with the blood test, they would be like, yep, yeah, there's a baby in there. So I still left in disbelief. And that's my main thing about this first trimester until I had that scan, which was only a few weeks ago. I was in disbelief that I was pregnant. One, because I know I felt nauseous and all this stuff, but me and Tom kept making jokes saying like, imagine if it is all in my head because that can happen. And I've been making myself feel ill, feel not pregnant, but feel different. And I'm not actually pregnant because I would, I would have believed that I wasn't pregnant as well. So anyway, yeah, we left the appointment kind of, I was in disbelief. I don't know about Tom's feelings to be fair. I feel like it was a bit more real for him, but I was still in disbelief and yeah so carrying on with week nine i have just put eating and drinking consistently this week more spotty and picking at spots when tired which is what i do anyway again i pick at my spots which is why i've had micro needling in the past i use retinol obviously not anymore it's too strong so yeah i was picking up my spots basically and i thought i was doing well but I loved watermelon, sour cream and onion pretzels, which I hadn't had in ages. Luke says sport berry. <laughs> there was this one morning, or maybe a few mornings actually. This one I've written down in particular. I had tomato soup at 5am in the morning. So I woke up, had tomato soup with lots of bread because that's how I eat it. At 5 o'clock in the morning and then went back to bed. So I guess I was craving that. I guess I woke up hungry and I was like, you know what? I could eat some tomato soup but when i say like i don't think i've really had any cravings it's because i've not specifically been like oh, i need to make sure i've got that in so i need to nip to the shop and go and buy these and you know and I, i've only really like done it done something twice and then i've like gone on to the next thing so yeah i don't think i would say that i've specifically had cravings but i've craved things at that moment in time maybe because i know they're in the house or it's comforting or something Okay, so week 10, we're getting there. I know this is like already nearly 30 minutes long. Bear with me. So week 10, went back to DMP work. So dance movement psychotherapy. So I was working in schools 
Monday to Wednesday. Uh, my hip flexor on my left side feels really tight is what I put. And I was very aware, like, I know that I can go and get pregnancy massages, but I'm trying to like save and wait until, you know, I'm a bit, bit more bigger, a bit more in need of that. And I can be consistent with that. But yeah, I did research like, because I usually foam roll out my legs and my back and my bum and stuff. Like I was doing that beforehand, of course, with my dancing and gymnastics. And it did say something about you shouldn't really massage your legs or something because it can cause something. So I've still not asked a professional about that. So I've kind of avoided that. But I'll do stretches and stuff. And I had a bit more energy to be able to do stretches on week 10. But yeah, my hip flexor felt really tight. I think I was laid in the fetus position a lot. I was very aware I can't lay on my back. And yeah, so that was a bit of a change for me as well feeling in capitals cold but it, the weather did drop so that's probably why boobs really achy feeling more organized when home alone more of an appetite and then i've put in brackets growth in baby question mark more bloated and round of stomach so possibly it was can't sleep on front much feeling anxious about things not happening in time so i think that's more to do with again moving out the odd pain in bladder and pubic bone so it wasn't anything to be concerned about but yeah I just felt felt that I was very aware of it and I was like oh things are things are changing down there <laughs> week 11 boobs felt more painful like I needed to size up in bras or have you know more of a looser bra fitting I've not actually bought any new bras but I was wearing more like wide bras or like really tight sports bras whereas now I'm wearing the more looser bras you know um loosening up the straps and stuff and that seems to work for me as soon as i get home though i do whip it off it hurt when you first touch them like an electric shock so yeah if i ever caught them or anything like that it just they definitely felt different a lot more tender i feel less de dehydrated starting to show when relaxed so i spoke about this in my last video so last week's video where basically it's nothing worth going back to the video to see it or unless you want to see my bump but because that was at 16 weeks but I naturally hold my core my pelvic floor I think that's to do with being a dancer all my life and gymnastics and even like being aware like I need to be doing my pelvic floor exercises a lot because I'm pregnant and yeah so when people are like oh can I see your stomach or I go to show someone or go to look myself it doesn't look like much because I am holding, I just look bloated. But then when I'm like, no, I need to relax, just relax, shake it off, breathe. And then like, it's like, whoa, like there's been a time where I've done that to Tom and he's kind of not thought anything because he's thinking, well, how much is she sort of getting smaller from holding a core, for example. And then when I fully let it go, he's like, that's scary. <laughs> so yes, definitely started to show more and relax, eating more. Still tired, but not as bad. Like in watermelon, mince, prawn, cocktail crisps. And I still do like them. Not as much, but I still do like sometimes gravitate towards buying them. If I'm in the shop and hungry at the time. Energy levels, all right. Still got spots. Some hurt. So some felt a bit more 3D and painful at this point. Felt the closest to being sick, but wasn't. I felt shaky like I would when about to faint back in the day so again that was more when i was hungry and i was like i need to eat now worst wisdom tooth again nothing to do with pregnancy but i've written it down so i may as well mention it adding to the pain <laughs> worrying about wasting time feeling ill before baby is born yes yeah, so i was very much like oh this has been a few months now where i've not been myself yes i've been lucky and i've been out and about still but i've not felt myself and then you know, I, I didn't really believe that I would feel myself in the second trimester. I can confirm now that I do. And then, of course, apprehensive about third trimester. Like, okay, people say you go back to being similar to the first trimester. And I was very much like, whoa, like I've literally got a few months to seize the day again before the baby comes. And how will I be after anyway? So, yes, I was just worrying about that when there's no point in worrying until you need to worry. So that's what mindset I'm in now. Felt dehydrated again by the end of the week. So that kind of like shifted quite a lot in that week. 
okay it gets smaller it gets smaller we're stopping at week 13 as well so just this bit to go week 12 stomach felt gurgly and tmi tmi but there was times where i stopped when i was driving to work like because i go to different schools i had to like stop at mcdonald's because i was like my stomach was gurgling and one minute i thought i was gonna be sick and then next minute i was actually going to pee myself so i had to <laughs> stop and run into mcdonald's i can confirm i never did poo myself but I was so close on the first time this happened. It only happened a, a few times. But I was so close. The first time this happened, I was like, I might have to cancel this session now. And it's literally in 15 minutes. I didn't. I never did. And luckily, again, I don't know whether it was adrenaline or it's because I allowed myself to go to McDonald's and nip in the toilet and tea load. I didn't actually have to run to the toilet at the school or cancel any sessions, which I'm, I'm grateful for tired as soon as tired had to sleep and had is in capital letters so i go to being tired which is you know you could get through being tired but then as soon as i started to feel tired it hit me and i was like exhausted need to sleep scan booked in for next week so i booked that very last minute body aching more loving prawn cocktail crisps more gone off of bread especially toast and butter which is what i was more gravitating to in the beginning no appetite so i lost my appetite really week 13 final week that i'm going to go to in this video is scan week woo -woo. so again this was getting me through anything any long days of work or whatever because i was like i'm going to be getting confirmed by a professional whether i do or don't have a baby in my stomach <laughs> i had more energy when, when tired, go from zero to 100 with exhaustion. And okay, so now that's all I've got there. But let me talk about the scan before I wrap the video up. Thank you for bearing with me. My, yeah, it says 34 minutes. So I apologize. Hopefully I can condense some of this down for you. But yeah, my scan. So me and Tom went to the scan. We had to get there early in the morning and it said, be prepared to stay for four hours. So, you know, I'm there drinking as much water as I can because you have to have a full bladder. And we go in late because it just happens, isn't it? All appointments end up being delayed and stuff. So, yeah, I'm bursting for the toilet. I want to cry because I'm literally like, I'm going to wee myself. But I can't go to the toilet because I want to be able to see the baby and have the best opportunity. And, yes, yeah, so the scan, I basically, just for my remembering and also anyone that doesn't know and maybe you are pregnant and about to have your scan uh so i think it's meant to be a 12 week scan but i had it on the 13th week because i booked it quite late but yes i basically we first went into the scan to see the baby oh it was amazing but like tom says that he was trying to have a moment with me but i was just so fixated on looking at the screen at first because you know i was like wow that's in my that's in my uterus but i was also like she's pressing down on my bladder and i was getting pains because i've been holding my full bladder like full capacity bladder in for ages i was like i'm gonna have to run to the toilet in a minute but i want to see the baby uh but yeah next time i need to be mindful not to drink too much water too quick but also have a moment with tom you know it, it's it's our baby that was lovely and then i could go to the toilet after that which was great and i brought in a pee sample with me because i was asked to bring in a pee sample with me uh, but if i hadn't have brought one in they would have said do it now but i had and yeah then it was a waiting game again and then i had to go in and speak to another two nurses that was there and one did one was doing a load of like the write-ups and stuff and the planning for the next bits and then the other one did my we sample like pee sample like she put something the test into it uh did my weight did my blood pressure i think that was it and yeah my pee sample did come back saying that i had a water infection so i had to go into antibiotics so then after that they they was doing like a load of different write-up bits and i had to come back to that room but before i came back to that room i then had to go and get my blood test done had my blood test done and that was confirmed like all okay 
but they still needed to send it off just to be sure so they said that i'd get a letter within two weeks if there's nothing if it's low risk whereas if it's not low risk i'll get called in a few days and i got a letter in two weeks so very grateful that it's very low risk of course they have to make you aware that even if they say low risk like sometimes they do get it wrong but fingers crossed all is still well and all will be well and it will still carry on to being the situation where it's all low risk and then we got the scan pictures which you'll have seen some pictures in previous videos or on my instagram i'll put my instagram handle around here somewhere and down below but yeah so with the water infection i went on to antibiotics for i think it was over a week a week to 10 days let's say uh but then i had to go and take in a pee sample to my actual doctor so i went to where my midwife was and they was like oh you're not actually registered at this surgery you need to go to the other what your actual doctor so i was like i'm constantly feeling like i'm doing things wrong but everyone's lovely of course but i just get in my own head uh so then i took it and i got a call from the doctor recently and he was like basically the tablets that i had for my water infection i mean it might have cleared some but they've seen they, they found something else which he said it as a growth i mean that sounds scarier than what it is it's nothing scary but um he basically he rang me and he was like oh are you pregnant i like went like that to tom because i thought he was going to tell me i'm pregnant because he didn't know that i knew or something but i was like yeah i'm pregnant he was like oh, okay so if you wasn't pregnant we'd be more concerned about this uh but because you are like it does happen and then he was like we can't tell you what to do but we would advise you to get it treated you can also do a retest so i was like yeah i'll get it treated so actually after filming this video i'm going to nip to the chemist because he has sent me some more kind of antibiotics but they're different and they are for seven days then he's taking another pea sample next week and i also see my midwife next week but i think i need to take a pea sample in after because the seven days I won't see her within seven days from today so i still have to go back in take a pea sample and fingers crossed all is clear but i just want to share the whole journey with you as such i wish i with the first trimester i do wish and i feel like i would have if i was in my own house but i do wish that i kind of video logged a bit rather than just speaking at you because i'm not in my own house i just feel a bit silly doing that and of course energy levels as well but i still would have found energy somewhere whilst making food or something but when there's other people in the kitchen so yeah i would have liked to have done that but you know it is what it is this is how it's turned out i hope it's okay if you are in your first trimester or you know pregnant in some way or just recently had a baby or anything like that or i just have any comments then let's open up the chat down below if you want to give me any advice if you have any advice or if you have any questions about sort of my journey so far or my journey from now if i haven't updated you by then then definitely just feel free you know if you don't actually don't get there might be some things that are personal and i'm a bit like mm, i don't feel comfortable answering that but you know i'm very much an open book so a lot of the time i will feel comfortable especially if i think it can help so, like even one person but I am going to get going because we're at 41 minutes now. So thank you so much for listening to my first trimester video. I'm sure I will look back on it at one point. Who knows? Baby might look back at it at one point. And yeah, that sounds so exciting to just think. I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl yet. So if you're listening, baby boy or baby girl, hi. <laughs> okay i've cleaned myself out there so i'm gonna go and pick up my antibiotics now and then go home and give kobe some attention and get some work done but yes thank you so much if you haven't already please do subscribe it's not all going to be content about motherhood and baby but hauls we've got loads of different things i'm going to do vlogmas and this is the first time i've said that anyway so yep i'm going to attempt vlogmas so festive sort of videos we've got the mic back which is great and yeah, like this video if you did like, and I will see you next week for a brand new video. Bye!